Good morning, and welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church, Greenville, North Carolina. We're glad you're here. My name is Carrie Rushing, and I'm the Director of Music at First Presbyterian. I have just a couple of announcements before we begin worship. For several weeks now, you've heard us talk a lot about various Bible studies and Christian formation opportunities for adults, youth, and children. Many of those have already gotten underway this fall, but it's never too late for you to join in. Contact the church office for more information about how you can participate. This coming Sunday, October the 25th from 4 to 6 p.m., our youth group will host the annual Fall Festival. This is an exciting time each and every year, and this year is no different. On one side of our church parking lot, there'll be trunk or treat. There's still a spot for you if you're interested in decorating your trunk. Contact Brian Dilday for more information. On the other side of the parking lot, there'll be games led by our youth group members. Not only is this a fun time to be together, but it's also an important mission project and fundraiser for our youth group. For many years now, our youth have sponsored multiple local families to purchase gifts and food for Christmas. The Fall Festival funds that mission opportunity. There are many ways that you can help. You can come to the Fall Festival and make a donation. You can decorate your trunk for trunk or treat. You could buy a raffle ticket for the gift card raffle basket or five tickets. And of course, you could always make a donation. For more information about the Fall Festival, how you can help out with the Mission Project, or information on anything that our youth group is up to, and believe me, there's lots, contact Brian Dilday. His email address is fpcyouthgreenville at gmail.com. And now, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Many 
Hear now our call to confession, friends in Christ. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But God, who is faithful and just, hears our prayers and returns to us grace upon grace. We seem to have lost the ability to see glory, God. We look at money or medals, last person standing triumphs and exclusive, only for the privileged few accolades. And we call these glorious, forgetting how they tarnish in just a few moments. We have forgotten how to recognize the glory that lives in the sacrifices of a mother for whom a feeding child takes monumental effort each day in the compassion of a stranger who gives his time and talent to care for sick and dying souls, in the humility of a qualified professional who uses her connections and skill to ensure the success of small projects that bring life to the least, in the courage of a peacemaker who stands empty-handed against tanks and bombs, or those who choose to serve and love an enemy. Open our eyes to the glory all around us, the glory of crosses and open graves in hopeless situations, the glory of your presence and creativity in dark and ugly and fearful places, and teach us to be both heralds and couriers of this glory, so that it may be seen to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Amen. Our assurance of pardon is this. The mercy, mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'm Jerry Cox. This is my wife, Kim Bell, and we're doing the Word and Wonder this morning. I'll be reading from Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way, we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me. And live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall live. And the Lord continued, See, stand on the rock. 
And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. We would like to share a story with you that happened to us about a month ago, over a month. It seems that we were we were coming back from uh, Beaufort, and uh, we came back into Greenville. It was late one night, and uh, Kim said, well, we don't have much gas in the tank. Let's fill the car up with gas before we head to Aiden. So we headed over to the uh, Walmart gas station on, um, Arlington. on Arlington Boulevard there, and uh, it was just before 10. We drove up to the tank and the pumps, and there was an attendant there. Uh, he was uh, cleaning up and sweeping, and we asked him, are the pumps still on? He said, he said, you have about two minutes left, so you better get your gas now. So, okay. We went up to the pump. Kim got out of the car, got the gas card out, pumped the gas, and we got uh, got back in the car, headed towards Aiden. Kim, you want to finish the rest of the story? Okay. We got home. We unpacked the car, um, and I said, honey, I'm going to take a shower, and then I'm going to bed. I'm exhausted. So that is exactly what I did. I went to bed, and by within a few minutes, I was out, sound asleep. Woke up at about 2.15 in the morning. Now, remember, we were at Walmart at 9.55, and they were open for five more minutes. The pumps would automatically shut down at 10 o'clock. So we had beat the clock. Uh, I was home sleeping, woke up, and it was about 2.15. I went, oh my goodness, I forgot to put my phone, cell phone, on the charger. So I got up, went to where I usually hang my purse. There was no purse hanging there on the doorknob. And I said, hmm, I must have left it in the car. We were at a rush getting everything out. So I went out to the car. And I looked in the front where I was sitting coming home. I looked in the back where I was sitting riding from Beaufort to um, a uh, Greenville. And Pop was sitting up there, Jerry's dad. So I said, mm, no phone. So then I went back in the car, I mean in the house, and looked everywhere. Do you hear me? Everywhere. Well, I began to have flashbacks. I guess it was about 2005. We had been living in Aden about two years, and I had stopped off at the um, at Oakley's Body Shop to help a former student to get a job there. And so I was in there like not even three minutes. And of course, I had my purse underneath my front seat. And the lesson from this is I should know better than to ever leave my pocketbook away from me. Um, when I came back out to get in the car, I noticed that my shotgun window, my passenger window, was broken out. And then I looked, and my steering wheel had been damaged. And there was a great big rock sitting in the car seat, driver's seat. And it had broken the wind sh a window on the driver's side as well. Well, I called the police. They came, and they said, yep, these people have a real good knack. They know exactly how to position their hands on the roof of the car, so on the palm, no fingerprints allowed. Sure enough, they had stolen my purse that had my checkbook, that had all my keys, all my identification cards, and honest to goodness, I remember about an, a year and a half or more it took to resolve that issue. So I was really panicking. I thought, oh my gosh, I have lost my purse. So I went back in the bedroom. This was now 2.30, 2.40. And I said, honey, wake up. We have got to go to Walmart. And he said, what for? I said, because I can't find my purse here. And that's the last time I remember my purse. So he said, okay, well, I bet it's not there. And I said, I hope to God it's there. 
Well, we drove nine point what ten miles, uh, and got right up to the pump. And you know how it has a pedestal where the gas station gas pump sits on. Right there on the edge, leaning up against the pump, was a black crossbody purse that had K A B initials on it. And I went, <gasps> and I kid you not, the top was open, the second pocket was open because I have my credit cards in one and something in the other. There was my purse sitting there exactly as I had left it five hours ago. And I looked at Jerry, I grabbed my purse and I said, honey, we have just experienced a miracle. And so that was our God's presence watching over me. Thank goodness. There and I is, wanted to share that. There is goodness in the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Love you. I've been thinking a lot this week about how we experience God with us. Like Moses and the Israelites, we yearn for God's presence. Like Paul said to the Corinthians, now we see through a mirror dimly, but then, then we shall see God face to face. The fullness of God's glory would overwhelm our earthly forms. As God said, no one shall see me and live. So we survive on this reflected glory, just bits and pieces, the brush of a finger, the wisp of spirit breath, an echo of angel chorus. Sometimes it's easier to identify God with hindsight, right? Oh, God was here, see, look. We are like Moses gazing upon the back of God's glory. And yet, it's still almost more than we can handle. I want to list three places where I have seen the glory of the Lord this week within our congregation. And, and I want you to share those as well. I'm going to post this uh, on our Facebook discussion group. I want us to be helping each other identify God's presence among us. The first place I saw God's glory this week was last Sunday morning. You might remember we had to worship, move worship indoors because of the rain, and the rainy light through the stained glass was just magnificent. You would think it would be dimmer than on a sunny day, and maybe it was, but the quality of the light was such that it made each colored shard seem lit from within. It was almost this opaque radiance and it took my breath away. How light filters through the rain and, and the beauty and the glory of a plan B or a plan C or I don't know, what plan are we on now with worship? Plan Q? It also reminded me of a couple of months ago when I was talking with Stone Height before her baptism. It was in August and we were sitting in the sanctuary talking theology, as one does with a four-year-old. And she was asking questions of us. Did God make this? Did God make that? Did God make me? And we were saying, yes, yes, yes. And she said, did God make that stained glass? And her parents and I explained that yes, in a way God did because God made the materials that made the glass and God made us. And isn't it amazing that we get to make things, that we get to create things with God. Isn't that a holy, beautiful thing? What glory. The next place I saw God this week was still on Sunday, but it was on Zoom with the children's, the children's choir that afternoon. Brad was showing them all the organ and he took them all on this special behind the scenes or behind the pipes tour. And he was explaining all the parts and all the cabling and the bellows and the, all the pipes and the tuning and how it all works. And they were mesmerized. He took questions afterward and just there they all were on the Zoom screen, raising their hands, raising their hands, itching to ask all the questions. What would happen if you touched a pipe or put it out of tune? How long does it take to learn how to play the organ? How loud would it really be if you were standing up there behind the pipes when Brad was playing for real? Real loud is what Brad said. So loud you might hurt your ears for sure. 
they were absolutely mesmerized and their curiosity, their joy, but then also the engagement and the expertise of Carrie and Brad, it was glorious. Finally, I saw God's glory this week when Rob and I took our family on a co-pastor retreat to Montreat. And yes, the beauty of the Lord is incredible in this place. The changing colors, the mountains, the clear blue sky, the leaves falling gently through the morning light. It is so holy and beautiful here. But right now, I want to tell you about where I am seeing God's glory and God's presence with us in our congregation. Rob and I were looking back over the last few months and looking for places and particularly groups in our congregation who have maintained a strong connection. One of the hardest things about this pandemic has been our loss of connection in our community. We no longer get to see the faces, hear the laughter, comfort the tears and just experience the physical presence of our congregation, of the body of Christ gathered together. But there are some groups who have really been able to maintain this connection even throughout the pandemic. We talked about our youth group. They've had a lot of challenges and changes to their program, but they are still so strong and so connected. We talked about our PW circles and our prayer, prayers and squares group who uh, stayed connected through phone calls and porch chats for many months, but they're now coming back together in these small, safe ways with such joy and purpose. We talked about our new wine Sunday school class who are now meeting on Sundays back together uh, for brunch and for really wonderful, serious study of the Bible and deep learning about what it means to be a Christian. We talked about Amanda's Bible study, which now happens over Zoom. They've learned how to use Zoom, many of them for the first time, or how to call in, and they are able to study the Word of God with great depth and with great purpose online. We talked about our tailgate worship and the sense of connection and community that we feel even across the pavement and through the masks. We even talked about our online worship, about the word and wonder which have been offered by members of our congregation, about the comments and the feedback that happens on Facebook. We talked about the baptisms, y'all. Who would have thought that we would do six, six virtual baptisms? That is the Holy Spirit, y'all. That is amazing that the Spirit's presence is able to connect us throughout time and space. And we are able to celebrate with one another the joining of a community and new lives in our midst through a virtual worship service. God is with us. God's glory is all around us and I can't help but marvel if this is a mere reflection how unimaginably amazing will it be to meet God face to face may we all wait in faith in hope and in love for that day amen Please join us in confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge us to live and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our lives. Amen. God blesses us all every hour, every day. 
with his grace and his love. It's now time for us to reflect those blessings in our gifts to the church. I'm Tom Irons. I miss you, everyone. I'd give anything to be back in that back row sitting beside my friend Earl Trevathan, but we're going to have to wait for a while for that. It is time for our offering today. I'd like to thank all of you for the gifts that you've given, gifts of yourselves, gifts of your work, gifts of your kindness, and yes, gifts of your money as well. If you want to make a gift, you can always go directly to our website, uh, www.fpc.org. Uh, sorry, www.fpcgreenville.org, and scroll down to the Give Now, click, and sure enough, you'll be right there on our secure uh, giving website, uh, and you can make a gift that way. If you're like me, you probably prefer to do it by mail, and you certainly can continue to do that, and we encourage everyone to do it. It's our gifts that allow the church to do the Lord's work. It's our gifts that allow this church to exist. Uh, it is what we give that makes this church. We are able to share God's love uh, through the church. And I ask that all of you reach down as generously as you can and give. It's our faithfulness that allows God to serve, allows us to serve God in the world. Bless you all. We began our prayers of the people with a moment of silence. This is an opportunity for you to center yourselves in the presence of God. It is an opportunity to lift the concerns from our prayer list to the Lord, a chance to pray for those experiencing natural disasters such as hurricanes, wildfires, and other disasters around the world. This is a chance to open your heart to God in the presence of God. Let us pray. Oh God, be present among us for the sake of all human beings on earth. Open our eyes that we may see the hope that you offer and reveal yourself to a blind humanity. Make your face shine upon those stricken with disease. Give them your strength and your peace. And the poor ones, the weak, all those weighed down by want, may they have the knowledge of you so to lean on you and be filled to overflowing in you. To the mighty and the wealthy, give a discerning spirit that they may be free to use their power to do your work, free to love others. To the sick and their families, may they know the power of your presence which surrounds them and the comfort of your presence which eases pain. To those who grieve for loved ones, may your spirit sustain them through difficult times. For this congregation, may we trust in the guidance of your spirit and find hope and passion for the work we do in your service. For this community, may we know the grace of reaching out to one another as sisters and brothers. For our earth, which humans call home, 
May we learn the lessons of compassion and care for one another and for all of nature. To one and all of us, may you grant hope and peace. These are our petitions, O Lord. But we do not only lift petitions to you, we also praise you for all the wonders we have seen. And we thank you for the many blessings in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to celebrate, even when socially distanced, for birthdays, which are days to celebrate the uniqueness of each one of us, for anniversaries and all sorts of anniversaries that mark significant passages in our lives. And for the simple miracle of each day created by you and given to us our petitions our praise and our thanksgiving we lift to you in the name of jesus christ our lord who taught us to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. charge you to go from this place, from wherever you are, as people who are sent and people who are called. Wherever you go, consider that God is sending you there, and wherever you find yourself, know that God is calling you there, that the love of Christ, which dwells within you, can reach out and touch others through you. Know this and go in the Spirit's love and peace and power. Amen. Mm -hmm. 